If anyone says to you that size doesn't matter, don't believe them. It does matter. Even more so when it comes to SBCs. This is one of the smaller SBCs I had in my hand. Hey guys, today we are taking a look at this little boy, the Banana Pi P2 Pro. It's a new headless single board computer from Banana Pi. It's only 65 by 52 and a half millimeters in size and it's based on the Rockchip RK3308 SoC. You could compare it to something like Orange Pi Zero LTS, but that one is hard if not impossible to get today. And there are not many similar SBCs on the market. To begin with, this Banana Pi Rockchip RK3308B-S is newer and more powerful than the Orange Pi Zero. It's a quad-core A35 ARM processor. Although the manufacturer states speeds running up to 1.3 GHz, I wasn't able to get there with my Debian. I was able to reach circa 1.1 GHz. It's got 512 MB of DDR3 RAM. We must be honest here, DDR3 is quite outdated today with flaws like higher power consumption and slower speeds. You know, the usual stuff. Storage space-wise, it's got 8GB of eMMC onboard storage and a slot for an SD card. It's got a 100MB Ethernet port, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, 40-pin GPIO, including UART, SPI, I2C. Over here are another 12 pins and the obvious USB 2 port and one USB-C port. The audio jack supports rich audio interfaces. What's noteworthy is this part. It's a PoE module, so if you choose to, you can power it via Ethernet alone. And that's about it. As I have said, it's a headless computer, which means it lacks a display interface like HDMI. The chip doesn't have a GPU unit, so bear that in mind. You can probably attach a more sizable drive to it via one of the USB ports, but keep in mind uh, that SSD drives consumes about 5 watts when performing operations so they would probably need a dedicated power supply. Simply because the PoE here can provide uh, 10 watts tops. So, what's the Banana Pi P2 Pro good for? As it has this audio jack, it's a great choice for use cases like smart aud audio applications, intelligent speech recognition, smart speakers and so on. You can use it in your IoT or edge computing projects. It's really small and low powered, so you can deploy it in remote locations and it has a variety of connectivity options, so it can be used to collect and process data from sensors and other devices. And of course, you can use it as DIY dev board. It's got 40 plus 12 GPIO pins, so plenty of room to play in. If you want to build a DIY robot, you can. It's powerful enough to run complex algorithms, and thanks to those GPIO pins, you can connect it to motors, sensors, and other actuators. When it comes to operating systems, you can download Debian Linux from the manufacturer's site and use the USB-C port to flash it onto the eMMC. To do that, you will need to use this generic RK dev tool. It might seem daunting at first, but it's really easy. You just connect your computer's USB with the USB-C on the P2 and flash it over. Overall, the Banana Pi P2 Pro is handy little SBC for headless applications. It's relatively inexpensive, you can get it under 40 bucks. It's easy to set up and versatile. To sum it up, Banana Pi P2 Pro is by no means the most powerful SBC on the market, nor does it have a plethora of interfaces, but it doesn't want to be like that. It aims to more specific use cases. It's got very small power consumption, it's tiny, and it doesn't cost an arm and a leg, that's all. If you have a question about the P2 Pro, please leave it in the comments section down below the video. Thanks for watching. Bye.